If you're just joining us, this is Speed Dogs Weekend 2, Day 5. And you're here now, ready and ready to go for some smushy, right? What's everyone's favorite hat then? What's your what's the hat that you have to wear on your guy? Your little smushy. Are they all named Smushy? We're gonna find out. Official Smushy Discord mod in the chat. It's getting serious. Look out. Be careful what you say about the smush. <laughs> the strawberry is cute. I love purple. The onion! Is that a mushroom farting, Abra? <laughs> Y'all are great. We haven't even started yet. Fantastic. That puts us at $3,094 thanks to those donations we just read off from Suspense Quill and Tic Tac Bo. Also Quill and the Fish's family for that, that match. So that was amazing. Thank you so much. The mods are in the chat. Listen, if you're here and we're talking about the charity, it's because we're talking about Save the Children. We're talking about this entire generation of children across the world. Um, in need of blankets, food, education, anything at all that goes toward the well-being of children. Save the Children is there for it. And so are we every year making money for them to enable them to get that that done. And I can tell you now, 3000 does so much for this, this, this um, organization. They are um, down to the dollar is maximized. You know, every single cent goes towards something very, very essential for children worldwide so it's really really good you're here supporting the cause and bringing your energy here for your runners absolutely and we're gonna do it through fun with smushy our favorite like i figure everyone here your favorite thing is games right we love video games so let's save the children through video games there's 11 hats total oh i need to look now we're talking about our favorite hats for Smushy. If you're waiting for the run, it's here just coming up. And we're talking about our favorite hats because we don't have a choice. We're going to watch the speedrunner optimize it, right? We're talking cuteness right now. <laughs> we are. This is our annual fundraiser from Speed Docs. This is Speed Docs. Bleh, bleh, bleh. Speed Docs Athon 2023. We were already talking about 2024 yesterday. It's not the all hats category. There would be an all hats category. That makes sense. The children yearn for video games. No, if you really look at it, it's really cool how we've normalized fundraising through sites like Twitch. And there's like a lot of money crowdfunded and fundraised for all these people all the time. And it's all through video games now. And it's starting to catch on like the normal corporate side of the world. I can tell you now uh it's it's starting to be like a normal thing for companies to like look into so it's really cool we can be part of the the beginning of that and making sure that our time is is well spent you know kids studio's back just in time for smushy i'm so glad we we're talking about our favorite hats i hope everyone here is well and comfy and ready because any minute we're gonna be starting the next run for smushy come home any percent by bowden and the commentator Abra, you're in the chat, I see you. <laughs> Verdant and sparkly. Oh! Oh, I see it. I love it. Yes, the smushy cord knows we're here. So it's a nice blend now of Speed Docs community of, of smushy fans and smushy cord uh, members. <laughs> and just people who generally like to watch awesome fundraising times with video games and speed ducks sparkly has probably your favorite too oh i'm so glad i am a man i was sick some say could be dying so if you didn't know uh we are doing some incentives and polls going on if you if you haven't donated yet and you're like oh i've never done this before um, it's really nice. You can actually like uncheck or check for them just to the send me an email or anything. Oh, hold on. Oh, I cannot hear you, Mumble. Fan 
fantastic! Good interruptions means we're time. It's time to go. It's time. We're ready. So let's get hype, just like they said, for a smushy, smushy block. TV slash popcorn parfait. Twitch.tv slash popcorn parfait. Twitch.tv slash popcorn parfait. Twitch.tv slash popcorn parfait. done with very little. The best investment we can make is in children. To work with human beings from the very beginning of their life. We work in far corner of the world. We provide training and chance for children to grow up healthy. in far-flung, isolated rural areas. We can build small-scale projects with a few families and in the community in general, and then they can have impact on the life of thousands and sometimes millions of children in other places. I believe it's very important to work with children in the early years. You help them to grow into their full potential. Investing in children's lives is investing in the future. We respond to any emergency of scale anywhere in the world. We're unique in that we are specifically looking out for the welfare of children in an emergency. And sometimes those needs are very different than the needs of adults and the rest of the community. It's not just about financial resources that help children, advocacy and policy change. That can affect millions of kids' lives. That's why the work of Save the Children is so important. We're there in the communities, working with community members to make sure the kids get an education, they have access to health care, to make sure they're protected from harm. The world is facing many challenges. We often wonder what's the best we can do to heal the world, to make a better future for mankind. The future of the human race is really in their hands. children have a brighter future that was a note from save the children who we're running county funding for today through speed docs on 2023 and i'm here with bowden and abra for smushy come home but it looks like chad already knows so if you guys already know them they're going to introduce themselves anyway hey guys uh it's me i'm back <laughs> uh smushy come home beautiful little cute game I'm here today with Avra. Howdy, I'm Avra. Uh, I also run Smushy Come Home, and because Bones is too humble, he has the world record and I have second place. So we are both well versed in our smushing and speedy. <laughs> 
mushing. That's awesome. So I think we'll be ready on your count, uh, Avra. Uh, I uh, you can go with Bowden's count. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, the time starts when I hit new safe slot here, so I'll count you down. Three, two, one, go. Alright, so welcome to Smooshy Come Home. Right away you'll notice that he's not going to be walking, he's going to be jumping. And that's because with a little bit of testing we determined it's about 5% faster. And beyond that, there's not a whole ton going on right now, so let's just kind of discuss what we even have here on our hands. Uh, Smooshy Come Home, you're a two little two inch mushroom named Smooshy as you can see and we're trying to get back home but the thing is wait aren't we already home aha that's the problem we are in speedrun mode which means that along with being able to see our in-game time and having instant text we also skip all the cutscenes so spoiler alert for anyone who's not aware we are going we would have been stolen away from our home by a big old bird And then, pretty much over time, despite the game only being out for, at this point, three months, but it was two before, um, it has gone, undergone a lot of route changes. Initially, we had to buy everything, and now it's significantly less than that. Instead of getting 200 crystals to buy the sword, blueberry, hook upgrade, fire starter, and water orb, we now only need 50 for the sword and water orb. And everyone involved with all the changes this category has undergone has been about of himself, me, Yeon, and Momo. Shout out to them. And so pretty much we're right in the tutorial section. There is the Smooshy Home, we're in the winter area, and then there's going to be three kind of levels. And so we're getting our initial tools here. The major, you know, what we're going to be using for the run. Tools for the Explorer. We have a pair of hooks that we can latch onto the wall and jump. We're skipping the upgrade, but it would allow you to hook twice, so you know you also get an additional jump. And a glider, y'all are familiar with how gliders work, Breath of the Wild and whatnot. And here, a tiny little skip to avoid walking around the longer way. Tool of Mining is used to break these little crystal rocks. The crystals are the currency that you use to buy all the items. But yeah, we don't need nearly as many anymore, so we're all good on that. Um. And just like that, we are already pretty much done with the tutorial section and into the real meat and potatoes and mushrooms of the run. Alright, so welcome to Garden of Spring. Our goal is to get the 30 crystals needed for the sword. And besides just getting crystals quickly, we're also going to be getting two spores of energy. I think that's how it's called. Um, which are used to unlock the sprint ability, which obviously is faster than just walking or even, ooh la la, jumping. Um. Yo, we're coming up on the first one here. We can do a little, uh. My game is lagging very bad right now. So yeah, I don't know if that would, what end that was. That was on my end for sure. Okay. That's weird. Okay, I was gonna say don't worry about it, but yeah, so there's a tiny little frame window right after placing one of the flowers on the shrine that you can maintain movement and still glide around during the cutscene, which would save a couple seconds. So nice to see that happen at least the one time. We'll get one more opportunity over here. I kinda did it pretty slow there. Maybe we'll hey, it's okay. Somewhere. I'm sure you'll hit the estimate. <laughs> Maybe. Alright, cool. Two yes, out of two. No. Alright, so here we have a, I think technically optional thing, but for how we have it routed out, it's pretty much mandatory. Is we're picking up the wind essence, which increases your glider stamina, so you can glide for longer. Because there are some very tight, unintended jumps later on that... It is pretty much necessary to have that uh, wind essence for. And then quickly also we're picking up the swords, which has more intended uses, but in our case we're pretty much only using it to get the items that we're going to be using to skip all the story elements. So normally you would have to go buy a blueberry and go into the crystal caves and get another one, but we're actually going to be skipping doing 
all that because it's slow. And you'll see he's dropping and picking up the hand. That's not just for oh, oops, not just for fun. So when you grab an item when you're holding it, it actually becomes part of your mesh. So any changes that happen to you also happen to the hand. So as you land from a jump, Smooshy kind of <laughs> smooshes down and then re-expands back up to the normal size. So when you're expanding back up, so is the hand. And yeah, make sure to get the crystals. <laughs> all right, um, you will slowly begin to see, although it'll happen much quicker as it gets. Uh, anyways, it's the hand is getting bigger, and we're doing that so that we can kind of face away from the wall, uh, from the log that has the lizard that wants the blueberries, and we drop it, and it pushes us out of bounds through the wall, and we can just glide around to the end of level trigger. Yeah, whenever I drop the hand here, you can already kind of see that it's. Oh, yeah, it's, it's getting. Away whenever I drop it. Hey, everyone, give, give Smushy a big hand, huh? Big hand. Alright, uh, that should be big enough. Yeah, that should be doable. I just have to squeeze into this corner. There oh, you go. First try, nice. Very good. Yeah, that's a little bit difficult. Well, not even just a little. Alright, anyways, so that was the first level with much less content done that you're intended. And we're pretty much going to be doing the same thing here, but instead of a hand, it is with an acorn. And we actually used to use both of the acorns, but it's actually faster to just use one. And convenient. don't blink, uh, yeah, so this is the other use for the swords. And so don't blink, the, the level will be over in a couple seconds here. And funnily enough, before we understood how, what skewing, mm -hmm. like how it worked, we thought it was just random, like, it's like, hey, why is this acorn big? But hey, now we know. And yeah, so there is a force to fall. I hardly knew her. All right, so welcome to Lake of Bloom, the third and final level, and I guess pretty much the quote-quote least broken level, because we actually have to do all the story missions, kind of. <laughs> like how in the other one, we didn't even touch the caves or anything like that. So we got a bunch of capybaras. Everyone loves capybaras. And so there's a brother and a sister. They're, they're fighting, so we have to go help them to reunite the family. And we actually have to do that, although, you know, quickly, of course. And there's the essence of water, which allows us to kind of swim underwater, which is necessary for technically at least one spot, but to be quick, you know, for two. So we're going to be right here gathering a couple orbs and placing them on shrines in order to unlock the cave to progress through the mission, as it were. And so I mentioned earlier that we're skipping the hook upgrades. That is going to be very uh, apparent what the difficulties that come with that are. Because although the, the earlier game got faster as we took stuff out, this one's actually gotten longer and, I guess, kind of harder. There are some jumps that were not designed to be possible without the upgraded hook, but we're we're gonna manage it somehow. I, I will point out the the jumps as we get to them. Beyond that, it's just you know good lines, hitting the boost rings, and moving along. Alright, so we're into the cave here, and pretty much right at the start is the first one. There's going to be a jump that you wouldn't normally be able to make, but the ground kind of slopes up a little bit, which gives you just enough height after one hook to get up. And then I don't remember if we've seen it yet, but just a little note that you can kind of barely glide over a ledge if you quote quote don't have enough height. That is going to be very useful coming up here in a few. And then so we kind of have to jump off this rock right there, or else, it, I don't know if it's possible without, but it's very tight regardless. Um, 
if you fall down, if you don't make it to that rock, then you basically soft lock yourself. All right, so here we use a couple of visual cues to, to line up the pistons. And then we're gonna, you know, just barely make it up, hopefully. Looking good. All right, that should be good. All right, so yeah, there's a couple of polygons there and in a, another section up later that you can barely get up. You just kind of float over it. Yeah. That, that tower jump there was like... That's super tight. And yeah, finding that setup for it. I think you found that setup. Hey, we both worked on it. Yeah, true. <laughs> Funnily enough, there's a way to kind of skip that sh section, which sounds nice, but we haven't really managed to get it any faster, which is a shame. Yeah, there's an item in the cave that you can use to skew and like clip out of bounds, but it's it's like a, it's genuinely a piece of paper, so. There's like barely any collision to work with and it's really inconsistent. Yeah, so now we are gathering quote quote seasoning, just a bunch of little green dots that that, that big dude wants. Because he has a rope that we need to because we didn't even see him yet. We'll see him in a minute here. We're we're trying to rescue the friend of the brother Capybara. That is the, the mission that we have with him. His name is Chungi. He's a he's a mushroom as well, but he is quite whimsical. He's a he's a good dancer. Good way to describe him. Yeah. And then I guess since I'm thinking about it now, it, it's kind of funny, like some of the oversights, especially because we didn't even buy the hook upgrade. It's especially funny, is uh, we give Chungi our hooks. So it's like, hey, we don't have any. How, how do we get out? Oh, wait, we still have them. Some of the little coding trickery. Yeah. Like, oh, also, yeah. you'll notice we have a, uh, a headlamp, which you're supposed to, like, make it in the Force of Fall, but we never did that. So it doesn't actually check that you have the item in order to have it in this cave. All right, so... Oh, I, oh okay, I mentioned one earlier. This is another tight jump that... You're not really supposed to do without upgraded hook. And then for our third, I believe third and final jump is going to be coming up here in a sec. And also I didn't mention that we went back in the same way that we entered the little seasoning part. But normally there's another cave entrance that you would use and blow up a rock. But we didn't buy the fire starter. So it's actually faster to skip the fire starter and go around the long way. And then here we have another very tight jump, kind of going up a slope, aiming for a place on the wall, and then barely kind of floating over a couple polygons on the, the ledge right there. Nice. Ooh, first try. First good try stuff. on that is actually really good. Yeah. I nearly lost my PB to that. I mean, I failed it once in my PB. Yeah. And it's still 20 seconds better. Alright, so we helped out the brother, so now we've got to go help out the sister, and then we will be on our way back home. Yeah, and that'll be the end of the run already. Uh, in advance to everybody doing the marathons, this is like the fourth or fifth time I set a very high estimate and then undershot it pretty hard. Yeah, it was mostly just kind of a safety in case things went wrong. We even had backup yeah. saves if we and soft also, I, I submitted this when the run wasn't this fast, so don't, don't blame me. Yeah. It's not my fault. So I don't remember when it got accepted, but yeah, it, it constantly had changes. Pretty much up until we had our PBs about three weeks ago. Yeah. Alright, so for the last bit here... We're cleansing the corruption in order to get the pebble to go into the cave, which I'm, I'm just going to say right now already, I guess. Uh, we are pretty much going to be skipping, so the the brother section is much longer than the sister. We're just going to do a little little glitchy, little, little fast yeah. exploit. And the weirdest glitch in the entire run. Yeah. Don't 100% understand why it even works. At least in this scenario. There's a trick that 
is like this that we used to do, but was actually taken out from the routes in exchange for the faster lizard skip that we did with the hand. So we're going to hit the loading trigger and then quit out, and we're going to do that late enough before we're actually into the cave, but when we load back in, we're going to be behind the loading zone so far that we're actually going to be out of bounds, hopefully, and we're going to... Uh, okay. Nice. It's not too bad. But uh, we're going to hit the, the loading trigger into the cave from the other side, not where you're intended to. And again, we don't 100% understand why, but nice. it will result in some, some funny effects. I, it might be because of hitting the water, but yeah, it's constantly pulling us forward, like how you have scripted movement when you hit a loading trigger, to kind of have Smushy walk forward. And then, yeah, so Collision just kind of messes up and we are through the wall now and instead of cleaning off the slug like you're intended to to you know cleanse the corruption off little sluggy boy right there sorry slug we're just gonna opt to not do that and just go fast and hit the loading trigger to the final story item and that'll be the run yeah i'll tell you when time is there's a little bit of uh, dialogue at the end yeah, so the black, I think I think it fades yeah. to black three times and on the third time it's it's time. Yeah, so you'll see the the in game time. It'll actually stop counting and when it stops counting that'll be the end of the run. It'll be here in a few seconds. Time is coming up now. Dang, that good was, stuff. That was way too good of a run. <laughs> That's actually better than my PB. <laughs> How what? Yeah. Good Wait, that's another PB today? No, uh, it's, 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 it's better than mine. His PB is a 1532. This is this is like 12 seconds off of record. <laughs> how did how did that happen? I don't know. Don't question it. Good good uh, good display. All right, so yeah, with that done, uh, I don't know if anyone has any other words. I just want to kind of shout out. We have the, the dev here in the chat, and he's very supportive of the speedrun scenes, very active in the Discord. If you all want to join the Discord, talk to all the smooshy friends, maybe check out the game on its Steam page, and it's also available on Switch through Nintendo eShop. Yeah, and shout out to all the other smooshy come home speedrunners everybody's helped with figuring out strats and stuff i'm really grateful i don't and get a lot for... of chances to directly speak to developers in chat so uh, i'm going to take this opportunity selfishly to say that this game is phenomenal if you have not played it it's uh it's much longer than 15 minutes i promise <laughs> Uh, for, for most people, uh, it's a very fantastic game. The soundtrack is great. The game is great. It's super cute. I saw the trailer and I instantly knew I had to buy it, and uh, and I did not regret my purchase. I played it for a few hours and I had a beautiful time. Uh, so please support indie developers. Uh, if you have not played this game, please do. But uh, great job to some humble onion and fail positive. The composer, uh, yeah. You all did a fantastic job with this game. And yeah, so funnily enough, yeah, uh, if, if you want to see all the content that we skipped over, yeah, you're going to have to, you know. Fork over the cash, buy the <laughs> game. He's so majestic. Also, donate to the charity. That's what we're here for. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Do you have any other, before I talk about the charity, do you have anything else for the Smushy community? Uh, just thanks for being so, so wholesome, everyone. Looking forward to everything else that the future has for us. And uh, have a great day and enjoy the rest of the marathon, everyone. Awesome. Thank you so much for continuing our comfy block. We'll be here uh, all day. <laughs> we have the next run coming up here very, very shortly, so don't go anywhere.